Hi, my name is Thomas Wikström, and I will tell you a bit how about you can use game technology to assess memory, for example, for elderly people or for people with some memory disorders. Why would you use games instead of traditional tests? One reason might be that it might be seen more fun and also might be a bit less stressful to play some type of memory game instead of traditional tests. Another reason for some people who are competitive, uh, they might also see it a bit fun to compete with other people and see how they are better or worse than their uh, colleagues, for example. Uh, but th this might also lead to memory improvements in best case. For this purpose, I created a NBAC game, which is using a, a quite used and quite old also NBAC test. This test uses your working memory and uh, the levels will become more and more challenging and the longer you play, the higher cognitive or mental workload you will have. There are different levels starting from level zero up to any amount of levels. Can be analog, for example, paper-based or digital. And in this case, I will show how this works first on paper, and then we will see it in practice. Those images there also uh, describes how it's working, but let me now show you this on paper. So, in this case, we have three levels. We have level zero, which is very simple. The test leader will give you a target number. So, for example, let's say that the target number is four. So, when this game starts, you will see a number, one number at a time. And as soon as you see number four, you should press the mouse button. For example, let's say now that the first number was three. Okay, you should not press three is not four. Okay, number three disappears from the screen. One second, one and a half second later, you will see another number. For example, number two, still number two is, two is not the same as four. Bye bye. Now, let's say next number is number four. Now you should press your mouse button because uh, then you remember you should press when you see number four. Number four disappears. Next number is number six. You should not press. Once again, you might get number four. Here you should press and react. So that was level zero. Very easy. You just get a target number to react on. Level one is still quite simple. Here you should react when you see two consecutive numbers after each other. So for example, if you first see uh, number three, then number one, number two, and number two. For the second two, you should react. So let's see now. First number might be number nine. Sorry, my pen is not working. Uh, okay, let's say it's number seven then, we said that way. And next number might be, for example, number zero. Number zero is not the same as number seven. You should not press. Both have disappeared. Then, for example, you see number zero again. Now you should press because this is the same number as the previous number. So that's easy. Also, once again, if you get number zero, then you should press because that's the same as previous. And then it disappears and so on, so on. So as soon as you see two, or the number you see is the same as the previous, then you should react. 
So a bit, bit more challenging than the previous, but not challenging at all. Then we get to level two. This is quite much more challenging. Here you should keep two numbers in your memory all the time. So for example, let's say you first see number zero, don't press anything. Number three, don't do anything. And the zero had disappeared, then number three disappeared. Then you see, for example, let's say number eight. Number eight is not same as number zero. So don't do anything. But now you see number three. Well, number three is same as that one. Here you should then react. For example, click your mouse button. Number three disappears. And then you see number eight. Once again, here number eight is same as this two ago. That's why it's called also level two. So then you should press. And this gets more and more challenging for your brain once this continue. Then for sure there are more levels, number th uh, level three and so on. But if you can manage level two, without errors for a long time, then you have quite good memory. So this was on paper. Let's then see it in practice, the game itself. This is in Python. The code is there behind. You don't need to think about that one. And here, the one leading the test just starts there are different options, but let's take the most simple one here. Play a single game. So here I should click when I see number four. Yes, now I should click. Ah, missed. Did not find my there. I clicked. Once again. Once again. So nine out of 10, because I missed one of the fours. And this is level one. So when I see two consecutive numbers, I'm oh, sorry, this was still level zero. Let's skip that one. So I can change here, single game, single game. Level one. Let's save the settings. And let's go back to the main menu. Nine, eight, two. Nine, seven, one, seven, seven, once again, six. So nine out of nine, I clicked all the times I saw repetitive numbers. So th this is basically it, how the game works. Level two is uh, similar. I will not play it now. And then there are also a lot of other settings here. You all already saw some of them. But that's it for the game. And then let's go back to the and wrap up the presentation. Uh, related to this, I also did a master thesis, which was to find out if a consumer based EEG device can be used to assess cognitive workload or mental workload. And uh, uh, as a summary, yes, they can. If you are more interested in that part, you will, from this link, find my master thesis, but it will also be down below in the YouTube comments. 
That's it. Thank you for now. Bye bye.